Thank you very much. I, I really wonder from the title of what I want to talk about today, whether you think energy is cheap. In today's world, it's getting more and more expensive. But I want to take you on a journey. I feel really passionate about this, and I want to take you on a journey that I've recently gone on to gain a better understanding of just how cheap energy is and how important it is to us. You know, some of the things that I say in this presentation might be a little bit shocking to you. For instance, did you know that each one of you, each one of us, is a multi-millionaire? That's good news. It is. We each deploy millions of dollars of energy for our own personal benefit every year. Nothing has changed our standard of living like cheap energy, like oil and gas. Without cheap energy, our standard of living will go back down to the poverty level unless we do something now to change that picture. So what about it? Have you ever thought, why is our standard of living so much higher than the standard of living was 200 years ago? when they used plows and, and lived a completely different lifestyle than we do. Have you ever thought about how our lifestyle is so much better than the kings who lived a thousand years ago and more throughout time? Could it be that the reason why our standard of living is so much higher is that we have more energy to do the work so that we can do more work than they were able to do. Today, we use machines to do a lot of our work. Airplanes, trucks, heavy equipment, um, locomotives. That locomotive has a lot of energy. <laughs> but we can accomplish so much more with the use of these machines. And these machines would be useless to us if it wasn't for cheap energy. They all run on oil and gas. Well, let's talk about it a little bit. Just how cheap is oil? You know, to me, it's a miracle that we can go out, we can explore, we can drill oil wells, pull that oil up, put it on trucks or in pipelines, and deliver it to the consumers for $100. And that, by the way, is an inflated price. It's inflated by market speculation. It's really less expensive than that and should be less expensive than that right now because it's so abundant. I have this little bracelet and it cost $149. Well, let's compare it to a barrel of oil. Okay. It, it gives me some feedback. It tells me how well I slept, as if I didn't know. <laughs> and it tells me how many steps I took during the day. So that's good feedback. That's, that's valuable for $149. But what about a barrel of oil? In a barrel of oil, there's 5.8 million British thermal units, or BTUs. An average person in an office burns 253 BTUs an hour. Therefore, an average person in an office could work 22,880 hours or 11 years on the energy that is in a barrel of oil. That means that each one of us has 11 man years of work for every barrel of oil we use. Never at any time in history has it been like that. The average person in the United States uses 60 barrels of oil a year. That's every man, woman, and child. And that's a labor equivalence of 660 people working in an office job for you. I told you you were a millionaire. Or 
300 people working for each one of us at hard labor. So there's never been a time throughout history when every individual in society, each one of us, could deploy the labor of 300 people working for us. There have been times when through military conquest or slavery or something like that, some people could elevate themselves and their standard of living above others, but it was always done based on the energy and the labor of others. There's never been a time like this when each one of us has the capability and deploys the labor of 300 people on our behalf. So let's figure it out. How, just how valuable is this? Let's do some simple math. If you pay someone $10 an hour and there's 2,080 hours in a work week, then you're going to pay those, each individual $20,800 per year. Now you've got 300 people, so you've got to pay them all $20,800 per year, and that's going to be $6,240,000 per year. That's the value of what each one of us employs with our 60 barrels of oil. There's, it's so important to realize that how inexpensive that is. We're employing the energy of 300 people, 300 to 600 people, for only $6,000. And that's the cost of our 60 barrels of oil that each one of us use. So, throughout recorded history, this hasn't been the case. Everybody's been able to profit by the strength and energy that they have been able to deploy on their own behalf. Some people have risen above by using other people's labor, but it's always evened out. Whether you chart personal income, or gross domestic product, or population, it follows the very same curve throughout time. What happened in 1800 to change this? I submit that it was, yes, industrial equipment that could do the work, but more importantly, the very inexpensive form of energy that would allow this equipment to do the work. The first oil well was drilled in the United States in 1854. There was an exponential curve in our standard of living that none of the generations before us have ever, ever experienced. There's a problem, however, and that's that water is different than oil. Water has a, it's a fixed amount of water on the earth. It never changes. It moves its form. Sometimes it's in the form of an ocean. Sometimes it's in the form of a cloud. Sometimes it's in the form of rain. Oil and fossil fuels aren't like that. It takes them a long time to form and to change their form. In fact, coal, gas, and oil were formed during the Carboniferous period 300 million to 350 million years ago. Once that oil is gone, it's gone. This depicts a, a well in the Byron Union oil field in Wyoming. My grandfather, George Brunt, drilled the first well in that field in 1905. I'm on the board of his company today, called the Byron Union Oil Company, and it continues to pump oil out of that field, but it's very near depletion. Once that oil is gone in that field, it'll take 300 million years to replenish. Every field, like the Byron Union field, follows the same graphic curve. You discover oil, you start building up and drilling more wells and producing more and more and more oil, and then it gets to the top and pretty soon you start closing down wells. 
because they go dry and then you close down this well and it kind of it's it's not an exact bell curve because towards the end it kind of levels out a little bit because of new technology and science that that will allow us to get more oil but every oil field in the world every gas field every coal field is just like this there's a fixed amount and once it's gone it's gone it's not coming back whether mathematicians have calculated for enormous future discoveries and in their calculation they've plotted how long oil will last now whether it lasts another 125 years is depicted here or it lasts 225 years because we discover more vast fields of oil than were included in the calculation there will come a time when we can no longer depend on this cheap vital form of energy remember our whole standard of living is based on the inexpensive source of, oil, of energy so that's why we should care our standard of living is not sustainable in the long term unless we develop an alternative renewable sustainable source of energy and it can't be expensive energy it's got to be inexpensive energy like oil and gas the other reason why we need to care is because our economy right now is an oil economy and as we go down the downslide of that slope demand will continue to increase while supply will continue to go down resulting in a very more costly form of energy for oil so what should we do this little video depicts uh, one of my companies biologic producing plastic from potatoes a biologic we can make bags that are partially made from potatoes which are a renewable and sustainable crop given the value of using oil for energy I believe it's crazy to use oil to make plastic it's valuable but it's not worth 640 million dollars a year the other thing that we need to do is we need to have a new national energy program a moonshot so to speak to develop as rapidly as we can an alternative form of cheap fuel like hydrogen for cars or nuclear for electricity so I want to be clear about what I'm not saying I'm not saying that we'll run out of oil in our lifetimes oil and gas and coal are still abundant and that's why fossil fuels are still so cheap even though we see prices starting to rise a little bit at the pump there's still an abundant supply of these resources so I'm not really thinking about us right now but what I'm looking at is it we need to start now with a real policy to develop another source of cheap energy for future generations before we get to that downslope in oil and gas which I guarantee you is coming it may be 125 years from now it might be 225 years from now but that's a curve that we will face so why do I care personally and why am I so passionate about understanding the value that we're getting right now and the importance of developing an alternative source for our future generations that's why <laughs> if we don't develop an alternative source of energy our future generations could be relegated to live under a system where the only energy they can use is the energy that comes from the strength and efforts of a single person just like our ancestors have lived for the last thousands and thousands of years they could only depend on the strength and energy that they could produce only now do we have the opportunity to deploy three to six hundred man hour years of labor 
on our behalf during a single year. So may we act now in our great abundance to provide for those generations a cheap source of energy that will allow them to continue to live the same standard of living that we now enjoy. Thank you very much.